Good morning, all. Come on in. We're just hanging out for a little bit. I see y'all coming. Where you at? Good morning, Stephen Dot. <clears throat> it is snowy outside, and it ain't going to stop today. Sorry about that, Georgia. Marianne, good morning. Oh, there's the other one, March. <laughs> Always looking for the sisters. What's up, y'all? So yeah, we're gonna say we're gonna say lots of prayers for Georgia today because she doesn't like snow on Thursdays and we've got plenty of it. Road out here in front of the church, can't even see it. So that's where that's where we're starting the morning from. We'll see where it goes from there. And that is why I'm in my basement. So shout out to Michelle who came by to get ashes yesterday she goes well guess you're going to be doing prayer from your basement yes tomorrow and I was like well what oh that's right that's right she's like you better get your books and take them over I said yeah I usually do I usually do morning prayer in my slippers and if and if if it's anywhere if it's more than that um the slippers won't handle it I'm not walking through <laughs> so so that's why we're in the basement today so I'm doing the whole spooky Halloween thing I apologize for that but you do get the advantage of the uh, multiple hockey posters, and where else in Carroll County you're going to get you're going to get a pastor leading prayer with uh, with two hockey icons over your shoulder? I mean, that's a win, right? Hey, there's Connie. I see you, Anna Mae, Tommy, Linda. Good morning, y'all. Oh, excuse me was tired after yesterday so trying to wake up a little bit this morning oh so i'm gonna read this out loud uh dot put up uh reverend dave denham asked me to say hi to all his saint mary's friends and so good morning and hello reverend hi. dave All right. Well, let's get rolling this morning. Uh, I hope, uh, hope you, oh, there's Georgia. Georgia, we were just talking about you. So we're praying cra like crazy for you today. Um, unfortunately, I think you've got our, you've got our biggest snow on a Thursday. Sorry. But certainly prayers that you're safe and that, uh, that you are well taken care of today. And so we'll fly into it this morning. Y'all, it was a, uh, it was a joy to share yesterday with so many of you yesterday, whether it was coming by the church or checking out the service online um, and just having an opportunity to chat. And, um, you know, I know this is not, this continues to not be ideal, um, but we continue to find new ways to make community. And this is, uh, this is fabulous. Um, you know, and so I'm just, I'm really, really grateful for the ways that you'll all turn up um, and continue to do the work of the church. I really, really do. Um, and so thank you. Just wanted you, just wanted you to know that. Um, Tommy asks, aren't you glad this isn't Ash Wednesday? I don't know. Um, I don't know. There's a world. I might have reduced the hours out there, but it might have been fun to stay in the snow. Not that anybody was coming, not with the snow today. Um, but uh, but hey, it was just great to see folks coming up to the church and get a chance to talk talk to you all for a minute or two. And so um, it was just good for my soul. I pray that it was good for yours as well. And so we're going to dive into our readings for today. Today is February the 18th. We are in the book entitled Common Prayer on page 149. Um, we're also on commonprayer.net and on and on the Common Prayer app. And today we're going to be reading a section. Um, and this going back over some territory, but today we're going to be reading in our reflection a um, a section on Hagar the Egyptian. Um, and I'll read a little bit of this introduction for you. Um, won't read too much. I know that you all are literate, but just to catch everybody up. Um, and Hagar was the uh, was the was uh, Abraham's wife Sarah's slave and when Sarah wasn't able to conceive um, she gave him over to um, to Abraham to try to force the covenant if you will to have a child um, it says but after Hagar conceived a son by Abraham Sarah turned bitter and resentful and began to treat her harshly 
Hagar's response was to run away into the wilderness, but an angel of the Lord appeared to her and urged her to, to return and submit to her mistress. The Lord directed Hagar to call the child Ishmael, which means God hears, and as with Abraham, promised her descendants so numerous that could not be counted. Hagar called God El Roy, the God who sees. All right, and if I'm trying to remember, and she is one of the very first people in Scripture to give God a name, um, and so an important, important person in our narrative, um, and an important person in softening kind of our our commitment and our conviction to sort of our own strain of faith, which certainly we want to have. We want to be, um, as we said yesterday in the sermon, all in body, soul, spirit, and emotion. Um, but it's a reminder that God. God sees, God saw Hagar, God took care of Hagar and made similar covenant promises to her. And so we remember that God is always and everywhere expanding the circle of God's love. And that's uh, what we honor today in the story of Hagar the Egyptian. Also, um, just being honest that uh, the Hebrew readings are a little frustrating to me. Um, I'm just not prepared to go through them. Um, and so today um, we're going to we're going to jump. Um, we're going to move our Hebrews reading um, and we're going to do uh, one of the readings that is typically assigned for Ash Wednesday. So we're going to go back to the book of Second Corinthians. We're going to change that up a little bit. So without further ado, let us pray. O Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. Excuse me. And our first full prayer of the day comes from our colleagues for the week of February 14th. God of light, God of clouds, with astonishment we see you in your glory and we wonder at you in your mystery. Allow us not to forget your presence even in adversity. And, in our turn, we will renew our gratefulness, and we will sing for your love. Amen. And our antiphon for this February 18th. Hear the cry of your children, Lord. Come quickly and set us free. We join the cry of all God's children as together we pray the words of Psalm 94, verses 21 through 23. They conspire against the life of the just and condemn the innocent to death. But the Lord has become my stronghold and my God the rock of my trust. He will turn their wickedness back upon them and destroy them in their own malice. The Lord, our God, will destroy them. Hear the cry of your children, Lord. 
come quickly and set us free. Today's first reading, continuing to follow the saga of Jacob, comes to us from Genesis chapter 35, verses 1 through 20. <clears throat> God said to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there. Make an altar there to the God who appeared to you when you fled from your brother Esau. So Jacob said to his household and to all who were with him, Put away the foreign gods that are among you, and purify yourselves, and change your garments. Then let us arise and go up to Bethel, so that I may make there an altar to the God who answers me in the day of my distress, and has been with me wherever I have gone. So they gave to Jacob all the foreign gods that they had, and the rings that were in their ears. Jacob hid them under the terebinth tree that was near Shechem. And as they journeyed, a terror from God fell upon the cities that were around them, so that they did not pursue the sons of Jacob. And Jacob came to Luz, that is Bethel, which is in the land of Canaan, he and all the people who were with him. And there he built an altar and, altar, and called the place El Bethel, because there God had revealed himself to him when he fled from his brother. And Deborah, Rebekah's nurse, died, and she was buried under an oak below Bethel. She called its name Alon Bakuth. God appeared to Jacob again, when he came from Padan Aram and blessed him. And God said to him, Your name is Jacob. No longer shall your name be called Jacob, but Israel shall be your name. So he called his name Israel. And God said to him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall come from you, and kings shall come from your own body. The land that I gave to Abraham and Isaac I will give to you, and I will give the land to your offspring after you. Then God went up from him in the, path, in the place where he had spoken to him. And Jacob set up a pillar in that place where he had spoken with him, a pillar of stone. He poured out a drink offering on it and poured oil on it. So Jacob called the name of the place where God had spoken with him, Bethel. Then they journeyed from Bethel. When they were still some distance from Ephrah, Rachel went into labor and she had hard labor. And when her labor was at its hardest, the midwife said to her, Do not fear, for you have another son. And as her soul for was departing, for she was dying, she called his name ben Anoy, but his father called him Benjamin. So Rachel died, and she was buried on the way to Ephrah, that is, Bethlehem. And Jacob set up a pillar over her tomb. It is the pillar of Rachel's tomb, which is there to this day. This is the word of the Lord. There is a sort of a resetting of the tale that we're coming to the end of Jacob as sort of the main character. Jacob's not going to go away. Um, but we kind of come to the end of Rachel as the central, uh, Rachel, um, Jacob and Rachel as the central players in this, in the Genesis narrative. Um, and so we see some things. We actually, we actually see him kind of come back to some of the places that have been important and to name them and to, to establish them as holy places for their story and for the people. Um, and then certainly, you know, we get this, we get this difficult story of a uh, Rachel, um, dying basically in childbirth um and uh you know and dying while giving birth to benjamin and benjamin's going to play a really important role um going forward and so we see this and so it's useful to hear this the birth of benjamin how he's birthed in, in trauma and in loss and how that is going to play out in the stories to come so you're like well gee they didn't say enough about it here there will be stories i can assure you um you know, and then we also hear just in this childbirth story, is it not interesting um, that Rachel was buried on the way to Bethlehem? And so we we immediately go to Christmas narratives. We go to all that Advent and all those kind of things and start making those connections. And in this way, even if these even if these things struggle to make sense for us, there are some themes that start to emerge that realize that help us to realize the scriptures are so much more thick and intertwined. Um, 
And when we pay attention to those words and we spend time with the text, how much richer the stories become. And so my message, even though it's not directly related to the text, is always remain fascinated by the scriptures. Even when it bores you to death sometimes, always remain fascinated by the scriptures. And so we're going to jump over our Hebrews reading for today, and we're going to do a reading out of 2 Corinthians. We're going to begin in verse five, uh, chapter 5, verse 20b, the second half of verse 20. We're going to read until chapter 6, verse 10. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin, who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Working together with him, then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, In a favorable time I listened to you, and in a day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We put no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, by great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love, by truthful speech and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, through honor and dishonor, through slander and praise, We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet well-known, as dying and behold we live, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing yet possessing everything. The call is clear in this passage too. A season of endurance to be reconciled to God um, which simply means to be united deeply and as we are united it's only then that we find the strength to endure the things that um, the things that may come about as a result of our faith and so often we reverse this order that we're like well I have to endure if I'm going to be reconciled to God, I have to be ultimately and completely truthful. If I'm going to be reconciled to God and Paul's like, no, 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 no. Be reconciled to God. And then these things that you will find your life. Yes. Taking you at times into these places, but always triumphing over them in some capacity in some way of understanding. And so it really is a Lenten call, but the, but it's a Lenten call that really is a life call. Um, be reconciled to God. And it's not that God is distant from us. It's that we need to become increasingly aware of how close God really is and how deeply God actually loves us. That's the start. And with that strength, we can endure all things. And to our antiphon again. Hear the cry of your children, Lord. Come quickly and set us free. And for our reflection today, we do another um, <clears throat> we do another uh, scripture reading today from the book of Genesis. Early the next morning, Abraham took some food and a skin of water and gave them to Hagar. He set them on her shoulders and then sent her off with the boy. She went on her way and wandered in the desert of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she put the boy under one of the bushes. Then she went off and sat down, about a bow shot away, for she thought, I cannot watch the boy die. And as she sat there, she began to sob. God heard the boy crying, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What is the matter, Hagar? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Lift the boy up and take him by the hand, for I will I will make him into a great nation.
May we be inspired by the story that informs another one of our planet's great communities that God hears. God hears. And because we believe that, we turn to our prayer list, believing that God hears when we pray. And so we do have an addition this morning. Um, we have been praying for some time for a Nathan Goodpastor, who's a missionary, um, who's been hospitalized um, with depression concerns. Um, and the stories get worse, um, that now his father, Bruce Goodpastor, um, is in intensive care with low, low, bro, low blood pressure, excuse me, and a high white count. Um, and so now, as they're trying to take care of Nathan, now Bruce finds himself in the hospital. And so our heart continues to break um, for this family. And we, uh, we certainly lift them up um, and continue to offer prayers, um, both for Nathan and for Bruce, and then also um, for um, their wife and mother, whose name I don't have, um, but nevertheless, just as she tries to, she tries to, to care um, for her family, um, literally half a planet away, um, I simply cannot imagine. So we'll remember Bruce in our prayers today. And so let us pray. Lord, you tell us that you hear. Lord, throughout Scripture, we hear, that even we see that even though sometimes it's like you disappear from the story entirely, and then just at the moment that your people need you the most, there you are, as if you've been watching the whole time, as if you've been listening to every word, as you are, as if you are completely aware of everything that is going down. And Lord, it's us who are surprised, We're like, oh, we didn't know God was paying attention. So Lord, in those moments when we forget, help us to remember that you hear. Even though sometimes, Lord, it feels like in prayer we're just speaking words into the void. We're just saying things that have no benefit except for the people around us, maybe. Help us to remember that you hear, that you are listening. Not because you're under some obligation, but because you love us because we are your children. Thank you for bending your knee, bending your ear and hearing us in our joys and in our pains. And so we ask that you would hear us as we name before the throne of grace, particularly this morning, Bruce Goodpastor, Lord, and our heart um, is heavy with his burdens as he's in the intensive care unit. Lord, we lift him up, ask your blessings and your healing upon him. Be also with his wife as she tends to, um, tends to Bruce, and, Bruce and to her son, Nathan. Nathan. We ask that you would be with them, that you would care for them. We also pray for the family of Susan Heiss, Nathan Goodpasture, the father of Ashley Bernard, Nicole Jordan and her baby, for Sandy Lloyd, Perry Lyons, Martin and Ruth Chamlin, Ashley Barber, Owen Spires, Mark Fatorno and Linda Lawson, Gail Gacharna, Burt Remmers, the family of Billy Barons, Julie Scher, Joanne Buell, for Diane, Rob Rickle, Darlene Hayes, Butch McCotter, and LaRue Newsbaum, Helen McQuay, Bob Scott, Bruce Ludlow, Richard Lindsay, Artist Tully, Laurie Posey, and Marcia Brown. <clears throat> for Donna Rill, an unspoken request, Richard and Beatrice Hess. For Caitlin, Jennifer Ramsey, Terry Shavius, Joe Zentgraf, Steve Moorhead, Richard and Deborah Hahn. An unspoken request. Margie Snyder, David Miller, Jean Snyder. For baby Lacey, Carolyn Yost. An unspoken request. Cart Denner, Karen Anderson, Savannah Price, and Sandy Suit. Alan Showalter, Jeremy Dutterer, Ann Wilson, Brian Cunningham, Tom Cross, and Dave Cunningham. Lord, knowing that you are a God who hears, hear also the prayers that we pray only with the silence of our hearts and minds. Following in the way of the crucified one, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Lord, that you never abandon us to our hopelessness. There is always room at your table for those who feel forgotten or who have been cast out. Train us in such hospitality. Amen. Now may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again. <coughs> oh, excuse me. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen. Darn, I thought I was going to get through the benediction before that came out. I apologize. I'm so sorry. But hey, if you're looking for production value here, I'm afraid you have come to the wrong spot. <laughs> so friends, thank you all very much, as always. Um, and uh, and I see Tommy's request here that a member of her family diagnosed with COVID. Yes, yeah, certainly prayers um, for that member of your family um, and prayers that that does not spread. Um, yeah, it, and as someone who is currently going through that, uh, let me tell you, the anxiety is real. Um, and the fears are real. And so um, I pray that you would find peace um, and that things would things would settle out um, without any further infection. And so, friends, it looks like most of us are locked in today. Uh, Georgia, we really are holding you in our prayers today as you uh, get ready to head out. And we do pray um, that uh, that your work would find the right people um, today, that those who would show up are the ones who need it um, and who are supported by it. And so we pray for you. Um, the rest of you, wherever you're at and uh, however you're enjoying or participating in this snow day, I pray it's a good one for you, y'all. So we, uh, Belinda will be seeing you tomorrow morning. Um, thank you as always, Belinda. Um, and, uh, and so, um, but I will also be hanging out with you then. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. Until then, peace and good, y'all. Stay safe.